welcome to design of concrete structure codes so today's lecture number 17 we'll be discussing about design of short column under the axial load with uniaxial bending if you recall last few class onwards we are discussing about design of compression members we have seen the different classifications of compressive member and uh, based on the loading patterns based on the shape based on the longitudinal reinforcement based on the transverse reinforcement all these categories we have discussed earlier in details then in the last class we have designed a short column subjected to only axial load so if you recall we have discussed earlier also based on a type of load acting on a column we can divide the column into three categories so if you consider this is a cross section and this is the longitudinal section of a column so loads are applied in this direction compressive force then what will happen so if the load is acting just at about the cg of the cross-sectional area so this load if it is acting just at the cg cg point of this rectangular cross-sectional area then we call it it is axially loaded column so then in that case the column is subjected to only axial load okay so the failure of the material also will be happening because of crushing of uh, materials or if the column is very long then the failure may happen because of the bending too much excessive bending so anyway if the load this concentrated load if it is acting just about the cg point then we call it it is axially loaded column and that design we have completed in the last lecture we have discussed in details with the example also so now this is first case what we discussed now in the second case what will happen is uh, because in reality if you see all the constructions which is going on nearby it is very difficult to put the load just at the cg of the of the cross sectional area of column because always there will be some eccentricity either maybe here this side about x is about y x or any point in the uh, in that matter the eccentricity may occur okay we, it, is, it is very difficult or it is almost impossible to keep load just at the cg of the cell of the column or the compression member so the load may happen uh, you know it may be in eccentric manner so maybe load is applied here or maybe here or maybe here so load may apply anywhere in the section apart from cg also so in that case uh, it will introduce additional moment on a column so because the cg is here right so the axis will be passing through the cg whereas if the load is load is applied here then what will happen so it will produce an extra moment so for example here if i draw so if if any load is acting here what will happen so this is connected anyway so now this between because of this distance eccentricity e it will produce an extra moment also in that position so that moment will be p into e force into distance p into e additional moment this column will experience okay so that is second category we discussed that is uh, axial load is acting as well as additional moment also generated so when moment will generate when the load is not acting on a cg load is acting apart from the center of the gravity of the section so this is very obvious in real structures also you will find that loads are not acting as a, uh, in a, a cg it will be acting apart from cg which will produce additional moment into the column so while designing the column that additional moment also we have to take care while designing so today we'll be discussing the with uniaxial so axial load with uniaxial bending means only uni uniaxial means what uni means one direction one axial you will have one axis uh, the bending okay so for example here means if the if the load is acting here then the moment will be generated about x axis right whatever moment p into e will be generated about x axis if the load is acting here then the moment will be generated about y uh, sorry about uh, sorry this one is about y axis and this one is about x axis so if the load is acting on an axis plane itself then it is actually uniaxial bending but for example if load is acting here then what will happen it will generate moment about x axis as well as y axis also both because here you have ex and ey both directions are there right that's why it will produce the biaxial moment so in this lecture we'll be discussing only uniaxial bending and very similar it is for the biaxial case also so now you understand the column is not only subjected to compression force but it is also subjected to a bending moment 
Why bending moment occurred when a column? Because the loads are not passing through center of the gravity every time because of many rest many constraints are there. Always it is very difficult. You cannot put load just at the concentration concentrated manner. Always there will be some eccentricity on a on, on a load. So because of this eccentricity, additional moment will be developed, and that we will be discussing today. So let's get started. So now what we discussed earlier. So let me draw a column first here. So this is a column which is subjected to a first let's consider this is subjected to a pure compression force P naught. Okay. Moment is zero because it is just applied on a eccentric. So this is our first case. So I am drawing cross-sectional area also. So now in the first case, our load is acting just at the CG here at this point one. Okay, just at the CG point, our uh, this concentrated load P is acting. Then this is our first case, right? That is load under the axial condition. Then how much load this column will take? So maybe you can imagine you are doing a compression testing uh, in a laboratory and you put a column here and you apply the load just at the CG point. Okay, and initially the load is zero, but gradually you are increasing the compression force. So when you increase the compression force from zero to you know some extent, after some time you will find there is a cracks on a column. Obviously we are considering about short column. We are not considering about long column or the slender column. So short column means the length is short compared. I mean the it is less than twelve times of the one uh, that radius of gyration of a section, right? So now let's consider only first case that is load is acting just at the CG and uh, P naught load is acting. Maybe initially it is zero, but gradually loads have been increased up to P naught. So when the load is P naught, then you feel that this member, some micro cracks will be developed in the center here. Okay, and uh, once it reaches to extreme, um, extreme values, then the failure will be happening. So that type of failure is pure compression failure, this one, second category, if you see, because the loads are applied just at the CG, and the failure in a member happened only compression. So in the entire cross-sectional area, if you draw the stress and strain diagram, you will find only compressive stress has developed and compressive strain also developed. Okay, there is no tension in a, in, the, in this problem if the load is acting just you know at the CG like axial load. So moment is zero obviously here. So here, if what what will be the moment? Moment is obviously zero. So if if I draw this curve, so this curve actually we call it PM interaction curve. Okay, so this we call it P M interaction. P M interaction curve. So what is P M interaction curve? P means what? P means axial load and M means moment. Okay, P versus moment interaction curve means how P and M interacts that curve will be shown here. So in this column design, or basically with the moment column design, this PM interaction curve is very much important. So let's understand how we, we can draw and what is the implication of the PM interaction curve. So as I mentioned, this is our first case. So first case means this compression failure happened. Now you understood because load is applied just at the CG of the cross section and there is no moment. So moment is zero in the first case. So here the X axis is basically moment axis M. If you see this is M axis, whereas this axis Y axis is basically P axis, okay, axial load axis. So in the first case, basically moment is zero. So we are into moment zero. So what is the failure load, uh, compression failure load of this column will be directly very high. For example, this is P naught. This is our first case. One, if you see written, this is our first case, and uh, moment is zero. Okay, because this point moment is zero. There is no eccentricity, and the load it, it takes is P naught. So up to this point. Okay, so this point now we got it. Now what will happen if the load now starts you know more eccentrically? So now in the second case, load applied here in the second position here. Then what will happen? That means here in this diagram also load with load is applied here. Okay, now our P naught is here. Maybe P P eccentricity P E for example E1 P U1 is applied here, not at the CG, but little far from the CG. And this distance will be E, small E eccentricity we call it. Okay, so this distance also we can call it eccentricity E small E. Okay. 
So now if the load is applied here, then what will happen? Obviously here also load will be changed to here. Or you can consider it here also, that is no problem. So one side load is applied P into E. Now what will happen because of this eccentricity E? So this will produce an extra moment. Anyway, P load is there anyway. Axial load P is there. P E1 is there anyway. Plus it will produce an extra moment also. How much will be the moment? Force into distance, right? So this is your CG axis and P E into E will give you the additional moment. So additional moment will be generated right in this case when you have the eccentricity. So eccentricity means now what will happen? Now you can imagine that if you know we are applying a load here, that means this side, if you take the cross section of this member, what will happen? If you see the cross section, so maybe at the middle portion means this side will be subjected to compression. So this side will be subjected to compression in the second case. Okay, whereas this side will be subjected to tension, right? This side will be subjected to tension. Why? Because when we apply the load here, means when one side is an eccentricity load is applied, means this side will be trying to compress, whereas this side will be trying to lift up. Is not it? You you can do it in a in a paper also. You can take a book and one side of the book you apply the load only one side. You will find that the, the that side where you are applying the load that side will go down, whereas opposite corner will go up. Okay, so something if I draw here, the deflected shape will be something like that. So the deflected shape will be something like that. Although it is very exaggerated manner, but you can imagine. So this is the deflected shape of this column after you apply the load P. So what happened this side right hand side of the section is basically compressed whereas left hand side is actually lift up means tension force occurred so whenever eccentricity develops means our compression member or the column is subjected to axial load as well as bending moment also then what will happen then the ultimately the load carrying capacity of the column will be basically reduced so that is the plot if you see so at the first case what we discussed is compressive failure where you know there is no eccentricity load is applied just at the cg of the center cg of the cross section then there is no moment only p is this much but whenever the p e means eccentricity eccentric load is applied what will happen the additional moment also generated because of that you know the p force or the p uh, the load carrying capacity of this member actually reduced now because now axial load as well as bending moment also happening and the failure will be now you no know, tension failure if eccentricity is too high then the failure may happen at tension failure means although right right hand side of the section will be compression force whereas left hand side will be you know tensile stress and the failure may happen in the tensile tensile side so that is a plot if you see. now whenever the you increase the eccentricity what will happen basically moment also will increase so when the moment increases if you see the p value also reduces p means load carrying capacity of the column so the load carrying capacity of the column also reduces as soon as the moment value increases but at certain extent what will happen so but still up to this point there is compression failure means up to that much bending moment also if it, if the system produces then also the failure will be compression failure means compression fiber will fail but at there will be some threshold point where the failure will be happening balanced failure balanced failure means the failure in the right hand side this side you will have compression failure and the left hand side will have the tension failure like whatever we discussed in the beam section also similar thing so the both the fiber failure will be happening happening simultaneously right hand side fiber will be subjected to failure in compression force whereas right uh, left hand side of the fiber here the failure will be happening as it because of the excessive tension force so when if the both the failures are happening simultaneously then we call it the balance section and this point is something like this point 5 so you can see point 5 the failure is happening actually because of you know compression failure because of balance section now again still if the more eccentricity if we apply what will happen is the load can capacity now will further go down okay and you can see the plot the graph will be something like that okay so if you increase more eccentrically i mean if you apply the load more eccentrically ultimately the load carrying capacity will very much reduce so this is diagram we call it pm interaction diagram very much important for you to understand uh, how much an axial load and moment is interacting with each other and this is the plot very nice plot you can see this is the plot basically 
so up to this portion top portion the failure is basically compression failure because now now the loads are more you know concentrated in nature after it crosses the balance section now this area is actually failure happening because of the tension failure because the eccentricity has crossed some threshold value of e okay that then the failure will be tension failure so this diagram is very much important at the beam, beam column design or column design is based on this interaction diagram so now in the column design unlike you know beam design what we discussed all the equations we derived from the basics and we derived and we finally done the beam, beam design so similarly we can do it for the column design as well even for the uh, uni for the axial column design we have done for that we, we derived first the equation of the pu if you recall in the last class we have discussed and then we have derived the expression and then we find it out the design but in the by in, in the uniaxial design by axial load with uniaxial bending design case we can do it from our basic stage equations also but that will be more you know troublesome method so much iteration is required so here we'll use another method of design that is design charts we call it sp16 sp means special publication like is456 we are using right for the concrete design that is is means india stay in indian standard 456 is the code number but similar similar to the is code one more codes are available that we call it sp code so sp code is basically special publication s means special p means publication special publication 16 if you download it if you just search in google you will get it sp16 download it sp16 there you will find so many inbuilt charts will be available design charts are available so we can directly do our design without you know doing the calculations what we discussed earlier also like beam design we did for everything from the manual from the scratch we did it but if you use sp16 design charts then the design will be very fast so many design charts will be given to you you have to just interpolate the values and you have to get the final answer so for the column design we are not for the column design of biaxial and, and uniaxial bending we are not going to derive it from the basic scratch whereas we'll be taking help from the design chart which is available in the sp16 and from there basically we'll design our column so using sp16 design is very much easy and very quickly we can do that so although these charts design charts what you will get it in the sp16 are actually derived from the basic expressions what we discussed from the beam design and even column design also so that discussion we we are not not deriving in this class although we are using directly the sp16 charts to the design so if you download sp16 from the internet you will get you know many charts chart number will be there chart number one two three four like the many charts will be there many tables will be there so for the column design chart number 27 onwards column design will start so before i mean chart number one to 26 number chart number you will get it for the beam design whereas chart number 27 onwards column design starts so chart number 27 to 38 so total 12 charts are there so that charts are actually for the rectangular section so if you are designing a rectangular section then we'll use chart number 27 to 38 and, and if the pattern is something like that then obviously we'll, we'll use this chart number 27 to 38 so in each chart you will find one chart will be for fe250 grade of concrete one chart will be for fe415 grade of concrete and the chart will be for fe500 grade of concrete so three different types of grade of concrete charts are available so whatever design you are doing which type of concrete you are uh, steel you are taking so that still directly you go to that number of chart and you can design quickly with d dash by d ratio also given so different d dash by what is d dash by d ratio so d is total depth of the section and d dash is the clear cover right from this left hand side if you see this is d dash so d dash by d ratio for the different standard values 0 0.05 0 0.01 0 0.15 and 0 0.2 so these four values of d dash by d ratio you will get charts so total how many charts are there here total 20, 12 charts are there right 27 to 38 and in each chart so one chart will be of fe 250 by considering d dash by d ratio this one next chart uh, chart number 28 will be fe 250 by considering d dash by d, d ratio this one in the chart will be fe next chart will be fe 250 with d dash by d ratio this one like that for each cutter each grade of steel you will get four charts so total we have you know three grade of steel so four into three total 12 charts you will get it in the is 45 if sp16 and chart number 27 to 38 and the, if you want to design this this type of section then this is very much useful you can do it 
But if you want to design this type of symmetric sections where the reinforcements are provided about the both the axes. So this will be useful when the load theory are acting uniaxially. As I mentioned, there are there are two, two types of bendings will be happening, right? So if I draw a cross section of a column, if you know if this is your CG axis, if the load is acting here, then it is about one axis, right? Bending will be happening about only about y axis bending will be happening so in that case reinforcement will be provided here and here also right now in that case we will take this chart whereas if a cross section is there and load is applied here okay i mean it is it has eccentricity about both the axes then the bending will be happening about x axis and y axis both so in that case you will use this chart because here the reinforcements are provided about y axis and about x axis both right so for biaxial case we will use this one means chart number 38 to 50 whereas uniaxial case will be using 27 to 38 chart number okay and for the circular section you will get it for chart number 51 to 62 so total 36 charts are there okay so 12 chart is for this one uniaxial bending uh, 12 chart is for biaxial bending and for the circular again we have the 12 chart so these are the standard values, standard uh, you know, number of bars and all are given to us. And using, the, using, using this chart, we can easily compute the column design. So this is the one typical chart. If you see, if you open IS456, uh, sorry, SP16, this is the chart number 29. You can see this is the chart number 29. So like that, you will get all the charts. Okay. So each page, this is over just snapshot of one page, chart number 29. See what is written. Compression with bending rectangular section so this for this section as i mentioned chart number 27 to 36 is basically 38 is basically uniaxial bending case that means the reinforcements are provided here and here there is no reinforcement top and bottom right only two sides reinforcement provided because the bending will be happening about only one axis okay so this is a chart diagram and this chart is useful for fe 250 grade of concrete uh, grade of steel and all charts are designed by considering m20 grade of the constant so concrete graded in all chart is m20 okay and steel is changing one chart is for 250 next is 415 next is 500 now what else so if you see d dash by d ratio also given so this chart is for d dash by d ratio 0 0.15 next chart will be d dash by d ratio for 0 0.2 so, and this is the pm interaction curve right what what i have shown in the slide number two I discussed that PM interaction curve, how it looks like. So see that exactly it is same, whereas this axis is the moment axis and this is the force axis. See what is written here, PU by FCK VD. Similarly here also MU by FCK VD squared. So this both, this is P axis, this is M axis, okay. And for different uh, steel level, different uh, sorry, different grade of concrete, basically different one line is there. So this, this is given P by FCK value is there. So for different FCK value, you can choose different percentage of steels. Okay, here. So from this chart, easily we can do our column design by just interpolating the values. Okay, so once you know that how much axial force is coming on a column and how much bending moment has developed in a column, so corresponding values, we can get it from this curve and from there we can easily interpolate what is the PT value. So this is actually PT value is given here. So each chart will give you what is the percentage of steel required. So once you know that, easily find your number of bars, our design is completed. Now what is the approximation we did while preparing this type of charts? So one is that grade of concrete. So for this preparation of grade of concrete, we used M20 grade of concrete. So this is one approximation. For higher grade of concrete, we can approximate by using you know, P by FCK is value. We'll, we'll get it from here. So FCK will we can substitute and we can do it for the other grade of concrete also. But by default, this chart is only for M20 grade of concrete. So this is one approximation we did. Next, the D dash by D ratio. So D dash by D, D ratio means what? This cover by entire depth D dash by D ratio is also for fixed, right? For 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0 0.2. Only four grade of D dash by D ratio we, charts are available. Okay. Apart from other other grade, then we have to again interpolate the values. For example, what, what you are designing in that case D dash by D ratio is 0.12. So 0 0.12 charts is not available. So what do you have to do it for 0 0.1? What is the value PT value? And for 1.15, what is the value? So we have to inter linear interpolate between the values. So this is also approximation. 
third one is uh, that equal distribution of 20 longitudinal steel bars on a four side of a rectangular column and longitudinal bar on a circular column so we consider this type of you know the reinforcement pattern similarly for the circular also some constant type we considered and then the charts has been prepared so these are the uh, approximations while we did it now what is the limitation of this using this uh, design chart first one is longitudinal bar equal distributed on four sides on a rectangular column okay second one is unsymmetric arrangement so if you want to do an unsymmetric arrangement then these charts always gives you symmetric thing so but if you if for in your case if you have unsymmetric thing and all again it will be difficult this is a limitation right the non-uniform placing of longitudinal bars in a cross-sectional area again it is not possible because in this charts are prepared for the you know uniform pla you know, placing of longitudinal bars and all and for the cross sections other than rectangular and circular like i section t section h section x section is not possible so these charts are only available for the rectangular section as well as only the circular section if you are, if, if your column is i section or t section or any other section apart from rectangular and the circular section then again this chart is no no use so these are the limitations for the design of column using the charts sp16 charts so now we'll be discussing what are the different steps or use of how to use the design charts for the analysis type of problem. So as I mentioned earlier also in the RCC design, basically there are two types of problems. One is analysis type problem. So first one is basically analysis type problem. Analysis type problem. And second category is design type problem. So what is analysis type problem and what is design type problem? So analysis type problem means the cross section will be given to you. Okay, so maybe a cross section of a column will be given to you. How many reinforcements are there? What is the spacing? Every details of the cross section will be given to you and you will be asked to find it out how much P or how much load the column can take. So you have, what you have to find out? You have to find it out what is the value of P. Right, what is the maximum p value it can take? That is our analysis type problem. And for the second category is the design type problem where the p, how much load is coming, will be given to you. But you have to find it out total section, total section with the reinforcement and everything you have to find it out. So that is our design type problem. Okay, so first we'll see how we can use the design charts for the analysis type of problem solving. So what is that? First step is selection of the design chart. So the dimension will be given to you, right? Dimension of the column will be given to you. Then what you have to do it, you have to find out what is the d dash by d ratio. Once you know d dash by d, d ratio and which grade of steel you are using, then immediately you can find out which chart number is required for your problem. Chart number 28, 29, 30, whatever it may be. So step one is basically selection of design chart, which chart we will be using. Now, next step is selection of particular curve. So see in this curve, in this chart also many curves are there, right? So many curves are there. So which curve we'll be using? So, the, so each curve will have different percentage of steels. Okay, for different percentage of steel, different curves are available. So now which curve will you take? So that will be depending on the, you find it out the, what is the percentage of steel is provided in the section. So correspondingly, that chart you have to take it. Correspondingly, that line or that curve you have to take it that curve will give you what is the p value corresponding and what is the m value for that okay then third one is assessment of column means you are finding out from once you know the point you find out what is pu by epsica bd and mu by epsica bd square and from there you find out how much p the co the, co the section can take and how much moment the column can take Okay, so that, that is our analysis type problem solving. Analysis type problem solving means we are finding out the P and the moment, obviously. Now, in the next part, we'll be discussing about the how to use the design charts for the design type of problems. Okay, design type means the uh, cross section you have to find it out. P will be given to you. Moment also will be given to you. You have to find out the P. You have to find out the cross sectional area. And the number, number of reinforcements, PT, everything you have to find it out. So, how to do that? first one is a basic selection of design chart so once you know which grade of steel you are using and what is the value of d dash by d ratio based on that you can easily select which type of gen chart you will be using from the sp16 now step two is determination of percentage of steel from the longitudinal bar mm -hmm. so this type of charts you will get it right so from there you have to find it out what uh, what type of uh, percentage of steel you you need okay so the, like the different bars will be there so 
different parts will be available right the different curves will be available so you have to take the respective car and uh, based on p u by f c k b d value and you have to find it out what is the p value p by f c k value will get it so f c k value also you know you can find out what is the value of p percentage of steel so step two is over now step three is design of transverse reinforcement it means you have to provide the tie or the helical whatever it may be so that design you have to take care step three and step four is the revision of design chart so if you know, everything is going smooth two and three then there is no need for design, revision of design otherwise if, we, if the two and three fails then you have to re, re, redesign the section column so again step one will go start so that is the typical typical four process for the design type problem so we have discussed two types one is analysis type problem and other is the design type problem okay so almost both the things are similar and now we'll be solving a problem example problem okay so what is the problem here problem is figure shows the rectangular short reinforcement column so this is a rectangular given short reinforcement column so whatever uh, sp16 we have discussed um, charts that is useful only for the short column it is not useful useful for the long column so if questions gives a long column then whatever process i just discussed that that won't be useful this is only for the short reinforced column okay using m25 so grade of concrete is given to us and grade of steel also given to us if 415 so analyze analyze me see this is analysis type problem analyze is given analyze the safety of the column when the subjected load pu is applied mu and you know. so what happens is this cross section also given to you and uh, the question asked that whether this column can take this much pu means axial load of 1620 kilonewton and the in the uniaxial moment of 170 kilonewton meter whether this column can take it or not safely so that is our question so basically this is analysis type problem the section is given to us so our job is to find it out how much maximum load or axial load and how much maximum moment this section can take so if that maximum value is less than this one or this one then the section the column will fail or if the maximum value or the capacity of this column is more than this value then obviously our section is safe so let's get started so what is given to us d value is given to us d dash also given to us find it out what is d dash by d value okay and obviously this is also given to us a fe415 grade of steel we are using right and the pt percentage of steel is also we can compute so what total 16 tor bar 20 numbers that is 4021 pt value is also uh given to us and the transverse reinforcement is also given to us six tor there is 250 center to center alternate it is given to us so all the informations are given to us now we have to find out how much maximum load this section can take this conversation can take so our first step is what first step is selection of a design chart right so how to do that so what are the uh, things available in the question so first is this is a obviously analysis type problem what are the data given to us b below is given to us 300 capital d is 450 d dash is 556 ac area of area of steel in compression is given to us fck value is m25 we are using fe415 is F steel pu means maximum this much load is applied so if you find it out d dash by d value it comes out to be 0.124 okay and pu by fck value whatever axial load and bending moment is applied so if you find it out pu by fck into bd because if you recall this pm interaction card in that first you have to choose what selection of design chart right so the design chart means it will be selected based on d dash by d ratio so d dash by d ratio is this much and fe415 grade okay so directly for 0.125 you won't get any chart so charts are available for d dash by d ratio of 0.1 and d dash by d ratio of 0.15 right but what is our value our value is in the middle so we have to do it for this one and this one both and we have to interpolate it at the center we interpolate it and that value will give you our required value and pu means how much load is applied on our column is this much given to us in the equation and mu also given to us right we have to find it out whether our section can take this much load or not that is our question so we have so if you recall the pm interaction curve how it look like so this is the pm interaction curve right this is char, some chart you will get it and the, and this uh, this type of shape you will get it so what is the x-axis x-axis is given mu by fck bd square okay and what about y-axis y-axis is pu by fck fck bd 
okay so this is a chart number for example whatever chart number you are using chart number 28 or 29 whatever it may be so this is a chart number you will get it right so pu by fck vd what is this x axis value that also we can compute so pu is given to a 1625 1620 divided by fck is also will also given so this comes out to be 0.48 so in the y axis you get 0.48 if you go up and in the x axis means mu by fck bd squared so this entire expression you evaluate and this value is comes out to be 0.111 something like that right so y axis will be 0.0111 okay and how much is the p by fck value so p by fck value is also because p value is given to us right p means total percentage of steel and fck is m25 so that also we get it so this multiple carbs are also there right if you recall in that is 45c this type of multiple carbs are there right so each carb will be for one by one pu by fck value okay so correspondingly that we have taken interpolated directly if it is not available p by fck card directly with this value then we have taken interpolated so our step one is selection of design chart so based on d dash by d ratio and fe415 we choose so basically we have to use chart number of uh, 44 and 45 so as i mentioned chart number 44 is available for 0.01 whereas chart number 45 is available for 0.15 our problem d dash by d ratio is 0.125 right in the middle so we have to interpolate it uh, and interpolation has to be done okay so our step one is over so we have selected chart number 44 and 45 based on d dash by d ratio and fe415 now step two is what selection of particular curve right so as i mentioned there will be many many curves right and so in this pm interaction curve so you will find something like the many curves will be there so which curve we have to choose so each curve will be did you differentiated by p by fck value so each curve will have different p by fck value so in our problem p by fck value is this one right so again the available p by fck value is 0.1 and 0.12 okay so these different curves are available so one curve is available for 0.1 and one for 0.12 but our problem is 0.11 so again we have to interpolate for that also so for the both chart number 44 and 45 we have to interpolate it and we have to find it out the approximate value so now assessment of the column now we now we know pu by fck v, fck bd square value and mu by fck bd square value. so both the values we computed and from this chart you, you check what is the value we got it so in the step three so we have to use table number 44 chart number 44 and 45 and mu by fck value and pu by fck value also given to us right mu by FC, pu by fck value is how much 0.48 and 0.111 so corresponding these two values we got this table what is this table so p by fck value 0.1 and d dash by d value for 0.1 this is the corresponding value okay so each value from we have to get it from chart number 44 and 45 both and we have to interpolate it so thus the bending moment of the column obtained by final value is this one okay which is basically 171 point kilonewton so our question it is given that our how much load is applied on our on our column so in the question it is given 170 uh, moment is applied and pu value is 1620 okay so whatever we considered so we, we substituted only pu value because pu value we in the plot we we given pu value and mu by fck value we computed okay so mu, mu value we got it 171.762 so and how much is applied moment 170 it is given to us so basically our section whatever is given to us it is safe and it can take 170 newton kilonewton meter so like that this is analysis type problem and that's how we can solve it we can check it whether our section is safe or not so similarly for the design type of problem if you want to design a column then the process will be just reverse where everything you have to find it out uh, mu and pu everything will be given you have to find it out p by fck value from the chart and from fck value also you know so similarly you can interpolate and you get you get it the p value percentage of steel value so that's what I completed the analysis type problem. So I would recommend please do it all the steps in your hand, uh, step by step, open SP16 and get the all the values, whatever we get it from the chart number 44 and 45, everything you mentioned, you just correlate it and you do it all this calculation manually and check whether everything is, you understood the concept is clear or not. So this we completed the axial um, column with subjected to uniaxial bending. So thank you.